Hello, I'm Citrus, and you're looking at the Metal Robot Spirits High New Gundam Beltorchica's Children. This is the third release of this particular figure, and it came out in 2019, retailing for 11,000 yen, exclusively available through the Premium Bandai Tamashi Web Shop. The very first release of this figure came out in 2015 as just the Metal Robot Spears High New Gundam retailing for 9,800 yen and it didn't come with a display stand which this one does include. And then after that there was another version uh, called Repackage which did include a stand featuring the same exact coloring and sculpt. And then there's this one which features very slightly different colors which we'll talk about once we get into it. But beyond just the figure today we're also going to talk about this the Hyper Mega Bazooka Launcher uh, matching this figure release, released at around the same time as well. Available uh, also from the Tamashi Web Shop for 7,000 yen. And uh, for the five nerds out there like me who care about how their boxes display and fit on their shelves, um, this is very annoying because it is just very slightly larger. All right, so let's get the main figure out of the box. I picked mine up very lightly used from Mandrake for about $117 back in 2021. And you can see there's some assembly required, mostly just for the backpack. And then inside you have three trays. The middle one is for your funnels. And then the bottom has the uh, display stand. You have a smooth joint at the bottom, a lock for extending and collapsing, and a lock you can open and then close again for the top joint so that it doesn't move. And then you also get a sort of a second arm here, adjustable at two heights to help support the front of the main arm. The assembled stand is a bit chunky, of course, but it is very solid and very stable. A very nice inclusion amongst all the accessories are the beam sabers. So you have the uh, normal long effect part like this, just put into the beam saber like so. We also have the shorter effect part that you'd be able to plug into the base. So this is kind of like the, uh, the double-ended beam saber that the new Gundam normally has. And in a lot of releases of the high new, this gets left out. Once you're done displaying your beam saber, you can put the effect parts away. And if we pick up the backpack here, you can open up the binder by gripping right under these grooves. It pops right open and you can stick it inside like so. On the bottom of the wing binder, you can see that each joint rotates a little bit. If we take a funnel over here, you can see they can fold them either way. There's a peg on that side and a peg on the other side as well. And you can just easily stick that in and pose them as you like. The fit is pretty snug and hopefully generally imposing, you won't be able to just bump these off very easily. So for attaching the fuel tanks, you can see there's just some ball joints there. And when attaching the fuel tank, you'll see that there's an EFSF logo only on one side of the tank. So for the figure to look the best, you'd usually want to put the tank on so that the logo is facing on the outside. So in this case, this is the left-hand side tank, and this is the right-hand side one. Okay. And the tail binder, you have this one, which is kind of uh, more like the tail binder on the original Master Grade from 2007, and you can replace it simply by pulling up and installing this hooked one instead. Some nice painted, I think, thruster 
I'm not really sure what they are, but this one, which has some nice detail on it. Just uh, feeding it in through the top like so. Unfortunately, on the backpack, regardless of which tail binder you choose to use, there doesn't seem to be a slot for you to uh, attach the bazooka, which you can do on some versions of the Hainu. Looking at the bazooka, you can see there are lots of nice painted details, including a wash that picks up all of the panel lines. Similar story here with the beam rifle. Nice panel lining and details. And as you can see, no extraneous pegs on it to allow it to uh, attach to the mobile suit in any kind of storage mode. The shield follows the old MG style as well. Nice solid back plate. You can see that the uh, Omro logo and the EFSF Londo Belcor logo are silver and the zero one is white. It also really helps you see that the primary color of the mobile suit is a uh, almost a gray color basically as opposed to white and the blue is more lavender they're narrow in proportion in my opinion i'm used to seeing like the top portion of the shield be a bit wider for the main body of the mobile suit i'll just take a look at it here without the backpack on so that uh, we don't have to fiddle with too many things being in the way and unfortunately, I don't really have a very useful size comparison. I want to say this is 1144 scale, uh, but I don't have another properly, well, 1144 scaled high new to be really able to show off. So here it is just next to a high grade RX 78. And looking at the main body again, you can see everything does look very good, but there are a few small QC problems. Like you see down here, there's some uh, excess on the red and a few places where, um, you know, just the paint applications aren't perfect. Uh, slightly disappointing considering that Metal Robot Spirits is one of Bandai's like latest premium small action figure lines right next to the uh, Vercoss Signature Robot Spirits series. Uh, speaking completely just about Gundam, of course. Now this being basically just a rehashed version of the very first Metal Robot Spirits release, uh, it's not mechanically very sophisticated. And as far as I can tell from my research, um, it's mostly just the original plastic Robot Spirits high new design, except all of the joints are replaced with metal. And you can see some of that as I go through the body, like in the ankles, knees, elbows, shoulders. Uh, yeah, there you go, inside the waist a bit as well. Everything that you touch, more or less, is just plastic. Mobility is okay. You have your full bend elbows. Not too, too much range in the shoulders free rotation of course and you get a pretty fantastic range at the base of the neck but uh, not as much on top it's going to do kind of cool flying poses like that see the eyes are very very narrow kind of like the uh, I guess going along with the more modern interpretation of the high new very long chin as well the one big ball joint in the waist the uh, actual ab crunch um, there's there isn't one basically very simple skirt connections here they go move out of the way well enough just on simple uh, ball joint mechanisms there gigantic ball joint for the thigh get very smooth very good motion and let's see, double joint in the knee. It's not too bad. It's like a, what is that, a 135, let's say. Now, one thing to pay, uh, to pay attention to is that the front skirts are very long. So there are a lot of poses where you can get the knee running into the front skirt, depending on uh, 
where things are at any given time. So just watch out for that so you don't chip anything. And then down here in the ankle, it's very stiff. And there's a certain amount of roll to either side. But the uh, the joint kind of maxes out before you know the armor gets in the way. Maybe it's capable of doing more, but I really don't want to push this any further because I really don't want to break anything. Even though this is metal, you know, small parts are still pretty fragile. And the foot itself is just one piece. There's no uh, bending inside of the toe or anything like that. So rudimentary motion, decent range overall, but there are obviously figures these days that can do much more. Putting on the backpack is simple enough. You can see at the base of the connection, there is a T-shaped slot. Uh, which will come into play later. Unfortunately, there's nothing that comes with the main set that does anything with that. So we uh, just plug it in like so. There's a little bit of a click that tells you that everything is firmly in place. And there's actually quite a lot you can do with the wings. They can come up and down, forwards and back, rotate, and then also individually rotate at each fin funnel. Uh, the only missing, I guess, axis of movement is that you can't spread or close any of the funnels together, which uh, I believe you can do with the high new vertica and the real grade. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, there's just no perfect version of these wing binders that seem to exist anywhere. But hey, at least, you know, it's not the high grade where uh, four of your spin funnels aren't even real. Thanks to the motion in them, if we were to equip the shield, Uh, you don't really run into any like clearance problems with the backpack. You run into more problems with the shoulders actually just because of how far out they stick and how close the shield sits to the arm. And it's very easy, as you can see, to just sort of bump them off. If you want to have the shield attached to the back of the arm instead, you want to mount it the other way so that the ball joint is facing inwards. And then you can put the shield on the back. And that just looks a little bit cleaner, in my opinion. I mean, there's still going to be an extra ball joint sticking off, but at least this way, it's uh, less visible. So mounting the shield on the back of the arm, no problems at all. And honestly, if you have this figure on any kind of rotating display, I think uh, doing this makes for the best effect, especially as it turns around this way. It feels a little bit weird of me to say this, considering that the high new is a pretty elaborate design, but this is actually a fairly basic figure. Now, if you're somebody who's not too much of a fan of all of those open hatch gimmicks and just wants something that just looks really nice and has solid shelf presence, this is definitely worth looking into picking up. And uh, I'd obviously try to find one sooner than later, considering that this was a web exclusive product that is most likely not going to be reprinted anytime soon. Now, of course, if you want to spice up your display, you'll really want to also pick up the Hyper Mega Bazooka Launcher. All right, so let's get this opened up. So the part of the package to blame for the immense length of it is the cannon. And I really think that uh, if Bandai was willing to ship this in two pieces with the barrel separate from the main body of the launcher, uh, it would have been a lot better for packaging. But uh, I don't know, just kind of disappointing. You can see this base has a uh, different design on it from the regular one. This time in a matching sort of lavender color and it says Hyper Mega Bazooka Launcher 4 High New Gundam Metal Robot Spirits. It's a little bit redundant to have two bases for just one figure of course and you really don't need to have both of these to uh, you know display the figure with the cannon but I do prefer this one more. I think the angular motif is a little bit more matching to the High News design. So aside from the cannon up here, of course, you have a power cable. You have one end here that has a larger plug that's designed to go into the base. You have this smaller end that's meant to go into the cannon. And this is a wire. 
So it'll hold any pose you put it in. But my frustration with these all the time is that uh, it's kind of difficult to get it looking like it's flowing without any kinks in it. Uh, because when I bend it, it's pretty obvious, oh, I just bent it here and I bent it there. And um, it just doesn't look very realistic. I would have much preferred this to have been a uh, soft hose, um, maybe like the uh, like the power cables that like the metal build Evangelions came with. Those always fall in like a very nice natural curve, and I much prefer that kind of look. Down here we have the same kind of arm that we got with the other one, a little stand adapter thingy, so you can raise the uh, mobile suit up a little bit more for more clearance from the bottom of the stand a three-piece arm that you can use for the bottom of the gun. And you can see down here, there's a three millimeter peg hole. So very secure connections all around. You have this handle, which will only move right. So the idea is that the right hand would grip it like this, and you'd have enough clearance uh, before doing all of this other stuff over here why this bottom piece comes down is beyond me considering that you know the fist can just slide onto the handle even if you were just gonna move it in like that so no no weird gimmick this handle up here can slide back and forth and uh, that's pretty much it rest of it is just solid very well painted with some decal applications The barrel does have a pretty fat seam running along the full length of it, unfortunately. Would have been nice if that was finished a little bit better. And then you have a bright red painted muzzle. The main body itself is a darker shade of blue than the actual MS. And you can see that um, it's completely different basically. And the other bonus goodies you get are these effect parts. There's almost like a teeth-like pattern, if you can see, in the, the uh, wave of the effect, which I think looks kind of unique. You have two tabs that go into the top and bottom. And if I just borrow the one of the fin funnels real quick. The problem is that the shape of the effect part seems to be a little off. It's slightly tapered so that it's narrower at this end, and it's a little bit wider at that end. So if you put in the effect part into the funnel, the way that the funnel is kind of meant to close, you get this massive gap at the end, which the box art does not show. So the intended direction is to put it in this way with the tapered end uh, facing in and the wider end facing out. But then you can see there's some pretty wide gaps at the top and the bottom. But on the other hand, the back of the effect part is meeting the back of the funnel. However, if you try to close the gaps on the tops and the bottom by closing the funnel slightly differently, uh, like so, n now the tops and the bottom have no gap, but now there is a pretty large gap towards the back anyway. So, mm, seems like a little bit of a missed execution here. Now to make full use of this gimmick, the set also includes a bunch of connectors. So you would stick this end into the back of a funnel. And this puts a very small ball socket cup at the end. And underneath here, you have a variety of arms that you can use with these sockets, like so. And they're very tight, so I'm not gonna jam this all the way in, but uh, you have four of these longer ones and two shorter ones. The other ends of these go into this connector here, and there's a T-shaped peg on top, which goes into a T-shaped slot on the bottom of the backpack. And on the other side, there is a three millimeter hole, which you would use with this extension in order to elevate it from the rest of the mobile suit so that the top of the stand, which is quite bulky actually, uh, won't have any clearance issues with the rest of the MS. 
So yeah, the final result with the Hyper Mega Bazooka Launcher on the high new looks very impressive. But even though this was kind of released as a companion to the Baltorchica's children version, I don't really know if this is actually necessarily the best pairing. The more, I guess, economical option is to buy the cannon and pair it with the cheapest version of the high new that you can find which uh, currently is the original version, which you can probably find easily for about seven to 8,000 yen right now, secondhand. Of course, there's also the issue whether or not you'd want to buy the cannon in the first place, considering that it is worth also about 8,000 yen uh, on the secondhand market right now. Sometimes you can find it for less, but it doesn't happen very often. And of course, as fewer and fewer of these are left in the market, the price can, well, only go up. The fin funnel effect parts are pretty cool in theory, but I think the execution leaves something to be desired, considering that the effect parts don't fit inside of the funnels perfectly, and the actual rods you use to connect them to the display base are a little bit limiting in the kinds of poses you can pull off. It would have been nice if we either had a larger variety of lengths, or maybe if the rods were just longer in general. I don't know. The ball joints at both ends are extremely tight and very, very tiny ball joints at the end don't fill me with a lot of confidence. Of course, if you just stick them on in one position and leave them there, uh, there's basically no chance that these funnels will ever fall out of position, which is nice. So as an overall package, if you were to buy both the Beltorchikov children version of the high new along with the Canon, you're looking at probably about $200 before shipping and all of that nonsense, assuming that you can get them both in the same place. And uh, I don't know, that is a steep ask, considering that the metal build high new is coming around. If, like me, you do like this design, then the great thing is that, well, this thing exists and it looks the way it does. Unfortunately, if you don't like action figures or you just don't want to spend as much as the market is asking for these right now, uh, this is also the only option because no other plastic model kits or action figure of the high new quite looks exactly the way this does. So it is tough being a fan of these, I gotta say. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.